Hello everybody, welcome to Studio C in beautiful West Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. This is video, I believe it's six in our GUI tutorial series designed for high school students. Um, we are continuing with the program that was done in video five, the golf tournament manager. But if you do not do that along with us, you'll, you'll be able to, to, to sort of see what the, uh, the code is. It's actually relatively simple in terms of how you add images is, is the one big thing. So there's actually three component things we're going to talk about today. We're going to add images. We're going to talk about how you hide panels. And then because it's a related topic, we're also going to talk about resizing the J-frame a little bit. So if uh, this is the start of the program as we're going to make it today, you'll notice if I click on this register now button, that now all the panels that I had previously done in the, in the last example populate. So again, if you don't uh, have that, you can kind of just play around with some other little uh, panels to kind of do things out. And then that code will work the way you want. And it also has to do with the resizing the J-frame. We need to make sure the J-frame is large enough to fill, to have space for those in order for it to look proper for our, our user. All right, let's get started. All right, so what I've done since my last, uh, the end of my last lesson, which had these these five yellow panels, I've added one additional panel. I've left it as gray just to really exaggerate what it looks like. And I've added a register now button on there that, uh, that we're gonna use. And we've done buttons lots before, so I'm not gonna spend too much time on that. The other thing I've done is I've created a subfolder called images that, um, that contains uh, my image that I want. And in fact, I have two images that I wanna show you kind of what happens if an image is too big versus an image is, is the right size. So uh, I've also, done that in the background I'll show you where that that gets created uh, in in a moment and how that and how that works so um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull in to this panel a new J label and pop it right there. Now, one of the things I'm going to talk about is is kind of uh, centering and aligning things a little bit as well, because it kind of it'll help. It goes along nicely with this this particular lesson. So you'll notice it pops in here. One thing to mention is if you are adding this to the old code, make sure that this new panel is higher up. I have named this new panel here. You can see it's called Title Bar Panel, so that'll be helpful to know a little bit later on. All right, so this label, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to, I want it centered on the screen. That's what I did with the register now button in case you were curious as how I do that. Is I have, uh, right now the default setting is left for horizontal line. So I'm going to go to center. You'll notice that in a lot of things, in fact, your button when you originally popped it in may have had a default uh, horizontal alignment to fill. So what I've done is I've gone in and I've gone and changed that back to, to center. And then I've also played around with its, uh, with its uh, size a little bit to make sure it's, it doesn't expand the whole screen as well. All right, so label. So it might not be obvious. So why a J label? Well, when you put an image onto a, uh, a J frame, it's usually put in as a label. That's what contains it. And the label is going to contain something called an icon. So the code is a little bit complex, but it's not a lot of lines of code. It's just a, you know, a little bit of long line of code to build an icon based on an image, and then you attach that image to, to the label itself. You can also put icons on buttons themselves. So if you want to, you know, you want to be able to click on a picture and make it act like a button, you could do it that way. And a few other things can contain icons as well. But generally speaking, this is uh, this is what it looks like. So I've got this label. I'm going to leave all of its other settings to be the same, and um, I'm going to do one new thing. First of all, I'm going to give it a name because we're going to be playing around with this. So I'm going to call this my logo label. And we're going to turn on custom create. Now, normally I've been suggesting to be careful you don't accidentally turn on custom create because if you do, it there are some extra lines you're going to have to type yourself that if you aren't aware of, that's going to mess up your whole program. This time, however, because we want it to have an image as it gets created automatically, we need to turn on custom create. So I'm going to click that on and, uh, and then go over to my manager if it doesn't jump there for you automatically. And you will see that there is now a create UI components uh, uh, function there for you. All right. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to do this in a couple different ways. The first, the first thing I'm going to do is show you what happens if you put in an image that is uh, the right size, and then, and that's actually really simple. It's one line of code. But then, more often than not, the images that you put in are not the right size for what you're looking for. So there is a more complex line of code that you actually have three lines of code to get it to uh, to get it to work properly. At least that's the way I'm going to show it to you. So. My, la my label, remember, is called logo label. So there it is. So logo label equals uh, new J label. Now, you have to do this because that's the custom 
uh, the custom create part of it, right? Is the, the logo was set up, but we have to call this equals new J label part. And then inside the 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 function of, of a new J label is you can pass in an icon if you want. And that's what we want to do. So we're going to say new image icon. It should be capital I, capital I. So new image icon. And then if all you want is the default size, you can simply type the name of your uh, file location. So now let's go look at that file location. So I'm going to go into my Explorer. So I've pre-saved this, and I'm going to go into my uh, my particular location of where my where my project is. So there is my IntelliJ lessons for Spring 2020 project. So what I've done is I've created an images folder here. Now I recommend you do this because it makes it nice and easy to kind of recognize where things are. So here's my SRC folder, and inside is all my packages and then all my Java code, etc. And so you're putting it inside the project, but not inside SRC. So I've created the images folder. And in here, I've got two images, my golf resort tourney.png, which is my, my logo. And then I've got a big old uh, uh, background image that I want to show you as well, just as by, by contrast. So you, we're not actually going to use this other and just to have a quick look at what happens if your picture is too big. Okay. So golf resort tourney.png. So again, inside your project, there's your SRC folder. Don't go inside there. Create an images folder, and inside that you put uh, you put your images that you want to to load. So, back in IntelliJ, then we have to say it's going to go inside images, so it knows or looks for this inside the project, and we just say we have to go now inside the subfolder called images uh, slash and um, uh, images slash, and then it's going to be sorry images slash. Uh, it's going to be the name of that file. Which was, if I forgot, I can go up here in my thing, golf resort tourney.png. Golf resort tourney.png. Now it is not case sensitive. This is the way my, my file explorer happened to set this up. So let's run it and, uh, and, and make sure it works. And what you'll see is it'll come in as its standard size. Now, its standard size in this case actually isn't that bad. So I I, uh, um, uh, I want to show you what it looks like if it's not the right size for, for stars, but we'll show you and then we can play around with this. Um, just to prove to you that it doesn't matter, that it's not uh, case sensitive, I'll make that R and that, you know, lowercase. It just happens to be that my program that I saved this with um, uh, capitalized the PNG for some reason. So if I run that again. You'll see that uh, um, in Java, the file names are not case sensitive. Once they're inside that, it'll, it'll work. Okay. Obviously, you maybe don't want to deliberately make mess things up, so I'm going to at least go to there. Okay. Now, I want to show you, however, what happens if your image is wrong, drastically wrong size. So I'm going to instead go this other file I've got called nebula.png, and I'll come back to this in a second because I just want to uh, show this as a, a point of reference. Is this is a big image that I've got. Uh, you know, I use I've used for background in, in times gone past, and it did not work at all. Why? Because I did not make it a PNG. It is a JPG. Uh, I'm actually surprised it didn't give me an error on that one. So let me run that again. And when you'll pop up, you'll see, holy moly, well, there's my huge window. In fact, you can't even tell it's off my, it's off my, my screen onto my other screen. So you know, clearly that's not what we want it to do, right? So we need to make sure that we can be able to adjust an image. Even if I do want to put Nebula in, I need to show you how to be able to adjust the size, the size properly, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to comment that line out, and I'm going to do it again, and I'm going to use three lines. Now, you could, you could, Compact this into less than three lines, but I think it's a good way to kind of see how this works. So the first part of the line, uh, the first line is is almost the uh, the same as the beginning of the other one, where we set up this new J label. Okay, so now we've got a J label. Then what we're going to do is we're going to create the icon, this new image icon uh, idea, in a separate line, and it's quite complicated to add this ability to scale. Uh, to scale the image, and then finally we'll add the icon back to J label to this logo label. So it's kind of three lines. Okay, so here's what this looks like. Um, image icon, capital I, capital I, give it a name. So I'm going to call this logo icon equals new image icon. Okay, now inside that, this is a little bit unusual. We're going to also call new image icon. 
because this will give us the ability to uh, to add some extra functionality to it. So new image icon. This is where we pass in the name of the file, images slash golf tourney, uh, golf resort tourney, sorry. I'm sure you love watching me um, make typos, okay? Okay, so new image icon, images golf resort tourney, I believe I got that one right. Then outside those brackets, you say dot, get image is popping up for me, that's what I want. Okay, dot, and it's get scaled instance, which happens to also be popping up for me. And dot scaled instance is a little bit off the screen, so I, it makes it a little bit harder to see, is, um, uh, is takes the width and the height you want. So let's exaggerate with something that's way too small. It's close to say 50, comma 50. And then the third thing is, um, is, a, um, is a way that it scales. So I, I use the one called image dot, uh, scale smooth. Now, when you type this in, there's a possibility that you may get uh, an error message on image and the dot scale underscore smooth may not pop up for you automatically. So you may need to require a import line. If you're in IntelliJ and this goes red on you, but everything else looks good, um, there may be a shortcut to add the import line. Just to, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to scroll up and show you what my import lines look like up at the top just so you can uh, see if there's any important ones you're missing. Um, and it might be the java.swing.star that didn't quite uh, uh, pull in properly or a few other things like that. So there's your, there's your import lines. Again, if you can use the, the auto import, if you hover over the error, it may likely find the auto import for you. Okay, so now we've got a logo icon. Hopefully this get scaled images works, although I told you 50-50 is definitely too small because that's 50 pixels by 50 pixels. And then the last thing you simply have to say is logo label dot uh, set icon, and the icon we want to set it to is this logo icon we just created. All right, let's run it. And there it is, nice and tiny. So we've, we've basically covered everything you want to do with, with images. A couple little things I'm going to clean up. Obviously, that's too small. So let me go and play around with the, the size a little bit. Maybe I'll go with like a, a 300 wide and, um, and a... My particular image happened to be a little bit wider than it was tall. I don't think I actually showed you that. So maybe I'll do like a 250 um, and run that. Uh, the second thing I want to do is you'll see when it pops back up is the word label still appears in the in the J label, which clearly is not what we want. Now, uh, so there we go, and that's throwing this off. So yeah, that size might might work for me. We'll decide here in a little bit, but at least that's a good one to start with. So that J that word label we want to get rid of. That's really simple. Just haven't shown you that yet. But as far as the tech the images go, that's it. Create a label. Add these three lines and this custom components, and you are and you are good to go for for images. But I want to do a little bit more with this. So first of all, let me go back and get rid of that. Uh, click on that label. There's the word label. Let's get rid of that under text. Delete. Click off it, and you'll see that it disappears. And uh, not surprisingly, when it runs, it'll it'll set it. Okay, so that's it for images. But now I want to add you know the second concept to this. Is I want to talk about how to make these panels. Uh, only appear when I click the register now button. So let me just run this one more time, make sure that I haven't uh, messed it up before I make any additional changes. Now what you're going to find is that these panels are actually quite simple. The, the, the making things visible and invisible, and I use that word deliberately, visible, is really, really, really simple. It's just a matter of knowing where to do it and when to, when to change it. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to go to the main class here. And just be aware that my labels, my panels, sorry, are called panel one, panel two, panel three, panel four, panel five. I left them at that because it's a nice order. It works nice and simply. I also had that main panel on the outside, and I also have a, uh, where's that logo? I think I created a logo panel, title bar panel there as well. So I have those ones as well. So I want to make sure that uh, when I am about to do this code and make them invisible, that I'm not accidentally you know, using the wrong panels. The one thing you also might want to do here is just make sure that nothing is inside another one by accident. So the first time I did this, I accidentally put my title bar panel inside panel one, and then that didn't work because everything was invisible and things like that. Okay. So where do we put this? What you want to do is you want to find your constructor method, public golf tourney manager in my case, and go down to the end of that method right there. And I've put a comment in constructor from a previous example. Okay. Now, 
in, I suggest you use at the end uh, because it um, you want to have everything set up first before you make things uh, uh, make any changes to the to the look of things. And sim simply all we have to do is say panel one dot set visible to false. Okay. Now I just have to copy that line. A very simple line of code. For all five of my panels, I want to be not visible to start with. So again, I'm in the last line, last lines of the constructor, and I hit play. And ta-da, there's my window. Now, you'll notice that my window collapsed. And of course, right now, I don't, my register now doesn't do, button do anything anyway. But what's going to happen in a few minutes, we're going to find that when I do get the register now button working, that this window is not going to do the trick, so we're going to have to add one little extra functionality. Okay, so let's go get this window, this button working. So I don't think I have a listener added to that yet. So I'm going to right-click the button, uh, create listener, standard action listener, okay. And, uh, oh, I put it down below. We may want to move these down just to, just to keep all our listeners together, but that's all right. And all you simply need to do is take those five lines, or maybe take one because we're going to copy again. Depends on what you find easier to copy and paste and set it equal to shockingly true. Okay, copy that for all five lines. Must have cut it, not copied. And you will see that it kind of does what we want. Well, it does do what we want, sort of, but when you run it, what it will do is it um, you're going to find it doesn't look quite right. Let's let it run. So there's my Alec Cooper Golf Resort, so it looked good at first. But I hit register now, and some, nothing happens, or at least not much happened. You probably noticed that, that this moved over a little bit. It kind of jumped on us. And that's actually okay because all that stuff is now there. It wasn't there before, by the way. I guess I didn't make that kind of obvious. So it did it, but the window is, is wrong. Now, you don't want your window to jump sizes on a user. Imagine if you were working with some program that all of a sudden was, was expanding and contracting its whole window. You don't want that. You just want to make sure the window is big enough to, uh, to fit your, your content so that when you hit register now, it goes to the right size. And so we need one more line of code to get that to work. And that line of code is the last thing we're going to do in this video. It has to do with the, the frame itself. And the frame itself is created in your main method. And so this is where we're going to, uh, we're going to add this line of code. And there's different ways to do this. The line of code that I suggest you do uh, is called uh, set preferred size. So we're going to do this here. You do have to do it before uh, you pack your frame and get it ready to go. Um, so otherwise, it's kind of a little bit of matter. Uh, um, uh, it doesn't really matter. It's up to you. But I've got this here. So remember that our J frame right here is called frame. So it's frame dot set preferred size. And set preferred size. Um, there is, by the way, a set size function. I find the set preferred size works a little bit better. Um, and then it takes what's called a dimension. So you say new dimension, and inside that you just set your width. So I'm going to say, I don't know, maybe we'll start at, let's say, 800, 800, see what that looks like. We'll be able to play around with that a little bit more, obviously, to get our thing. But what it does when you run that at uh, whatever size you say your preferred uh, dimension is, now it keeps that. And when I hit register now, now the rest of my window pops up. 800 by 800 is probably a little bit too big, but you get the idea. You can set that to whatever you want. So we'll just by exaggerate that by one more. Maybe we'll say 600 by, uh, so 600 is your width, 400 is your height, or five, 400, whoops, not 40,000. That would definitely be too big. And we should have our program ready to rock. So there's our size. Hit register now. Oh. Didn't make it tall enough, so for sure, because of my image scaled, I definitely need to make that uh, closer to say 600 by 600 or even bigger. All right, so that is the end of this video. So three major things: one is uh, adding labels to, or sorry, adding icons and images to a label. Second thing is to talk about visibility of, of panels, for example, and individual components can be set visible as well. But it's quite common to do it at, at the panel level so that everything in this panel disappears all at once. And finally. Once you do that, to, to set your uh, your frame size uh, to make it work. All right, everybody, thanks for watching. Hopefully, you have uh, had a good one, and we'll talk to you there. Bye bye.